Okay, today we're going to talk about how to create a prediction interval for your y variable, your output in a, a regression equation, given some specific input. Uh, this can be a, a, a time consuming and a complicated um, mess of numbers, and unfortunately, there are no shortcuts with uh, calculators, although uh, Microsoft Excel will do this for you if you have the raw data. But if you're given an example like this where you just have the actual stats, you've got your B0, your B1, and things like that, really, unfortunately, all you can do is plug it into the formula uh, and do your best to not uh, type anything into the calculator wrong and just to take it slow and get your answer this way. Now, just as a reminder, this is what we're doing. Okay? So, for each value of x. So this only works with some uh, specific value of x. So we have to be given a value of x. And then from that x we get a corresponding y from our regression equation. Right? They're normally distributed about the regression line and because of those, that normal distribution, we have a sample variance. We can then get a, a confidence interval just like we would with pretty much any other measurement in statistics. So you'll notice that this equation here is something very similar to what we've seen for other things like finding a confidence interval for our p hats, you know, our, our, our uh, proportion, or finding a confidence interval for our x bar, i.e. we're trying to find a confidence interval for our mu, for our uh, means, things like that. And it's always some estimate, right, something that we um, got from our statistics uh, minus and plus, right, plus and minus this E, and that's how we estimate the, the global one, the one from our population. And then it's got this big, huge, ugly uh, formula that we have to plug everything into. And if you don't have enough information, if they don't give you SE, your standard error, then you have these two formulas over here for calculating your standard error. Okay? But uh, in this example, we're given our standard error, which is nice, so it's a little less uh, stuff we have to do. All right, so let's take a look at uh, what we have in this example here. And uh, it, it, we've seen this example before where the cost of a slice of pizza and the cost of subway fare in a certain city uh, seem to be correlated, right? They seem to increase at a fairly consistent rate. In this example, we're letting X be the cost of a slice of pizza and Y represent the corresponding subway fare. So in this case, we're kind of trying to say that we put the cost of a slice of pizza into our equation and it spits out the um, subway fare. So it's kind of like saying subway fare is influenced by the cost of pizza, which it isn't. It's just statistically the two things are related. Okay, um, so you can read all of this. We want to do a 99% confidence interval, so therefore alpha is equal to 1%. And the uh, cost of pizza that we're concerned with is uh, 250. So it might help to kind of draw a picture of what's going on here, right? So here are our axes, right? X and Y. Uh, this is pizza, right? And uh, Y is uh, subway. Subway fare. All right, so let's say we have, there's our regression line. What's really going on is we're saying that if we have some X here, and we'll call it X sub zero, because it's the X that we're concerned with. In this case, it's going to be uh, $2.50, right? that according to our regression equation we go up and it spits out this y. This is our y hat that we get from our regression equation. But that's just one answer coming from this equation. And we know that that answer might not necessarily be true and so instead we want to create a confidence interval around it. So it's, it's kind of like pictorially 
just figuring out an interval around this y. And these equations are what enable us to find that interval. So it really just becomes a matter of plugging all that junk in. Okay, so uh, where do we begin? Well, we have to find our t. So you need to look it up in a table, or you need to uh, use technology, but somehow you need to figure out what your t value is going to be. Okay, so first things first, we've got to pay attention to right, n equals 6. So if we're going to look up our, our uh, t value, what are the degrees of freedom? Well, normally degrees of freedom are n minus 1, but when we're dealing with regression, our degrees of freedom are n minus 2. So in this case, we get 6. Minus 2. I'm not drawing well today. 4. Okay. Uh, so there's our degrees of freedom. We look it up in a table and with alpha equal to 0 0.01 degrees of freedom 4, I get a T of uh, 4.604. Okay. We already have our standard error. They gave it to us. And we have all the other bits and pieces, so it's just a matter of plugging it all in. Alright, so P e equals four point six zero four times zero point one two three. It's a big old square root. 1 plus 1 over 6 plus 6 times, and see this x sub 0, that's the x here that we start with. It kind of tells us where our y hat is. So in this case, it's 250 minus x bar, which is the standard old x bar we're used to, the mean, 1.083 squared. And on the bottom we've got 6 times the sum of the x squareds, and here you can see the sum of the x squareds is 9.77, so that's just 6 times 9.77 minus, and then here is the sum of the x's squared, so that's sum of x's squared, so 6.5 squared. And now really it's just a matter of uh, simplifying this as, as best as you can and plugging it all into a calculator, getting your answer, which is going to be right your E. And then whenever you get that, you're just going to take your uh, predicted y hat and plus and minus this E that you get, and that's going to be your confidence interval. Now you might be asking yourself, well, where is my y hat? You know, where is my predicted y? And it's nowhere in this equation. But it gave us all the information that we can actually get y hat. Now if you remember, uh, finding y hat is fairly easy and simple. y hat just equals... B0 plus B1x. Remember, that's how we come up with the uh, linear regression equation, the B0 and the B1. 
So in this case, you just have to plug in all the bits and pieces that we have. So 0 0.03 four, five, six, plus zero point nine four five zero two times our x and again we're doing it around the x zero that they gave us so it's times two point five. Okay, and uh, that should be all you would need to do to find confidence intervals for Y.